With the First Amendment, you always have to think about the fact that the person who disagrees with you most vehemently might be the one choosing what can and cannot be said. When we're talking about the basic curriculum that must be taught, or the state's decision that there are some things we don't want to cover, in terms of the required curriculum, the state has enormous discretion. And it also has always chosen the textbooks. Here's the list of textbooks you can use in state X. And um, teachers traditionally were free to bring in supplementary materials that might present other viewpoints or additional topics. In 1969, the Supreme Court said very clearly that, that students and teachers do not lose their rights when they cross through the schoolhouse gate, but that it was uh, reasonable and constitutional to modify the rights that students have inside school because of the extraordinarily important function that schools serve in our society. So they created a special test, and the test was that schools may not censor student speech um, unless they have a reasonable apprehension that the speech will create material disruption or invade the rights of others. But before doing that, they explained very clearly that inside the classroom, there should be what lawyers call a marketplace of ideas in which students can voice their thoughts and opinions and challenge. And then we learn critical thinking skills and each of us sorts out uh, what we think the right answer is. But within that, uh, this first case called Tinker v. Des Moines um, laid out a very robust vision of student rights and related it to the kind of society we have where we engage in disputes and we argue about ideas. And that's part of our history and it's part of why we have the First Amendment to um, protect controversial ideas. And First Amendment rights have two parts. The one we tend to think about the most is to speak, to express ourselves. And there's also a right to receive information. In the last few decades, um, the Supreme Court has taken, and the appellate courts have taken a much narrower view of what teachers may bring in to the classroom by their own discretion. And so the statement that teachers do not give up their First Amendment rights when they cross through the school gate is less true than it was when the court said that in 1969.